I'm the Director of Planning and, and Development here at the City of Conway tonight. We have a public information session for Ivy Ridge PUD. This is the second round of uh, public, uh, public information session. The zoning code for the City of Conway required the original meeting to occur per Section 311-3A3, which, uh, however, this meeting is not a requirement by the applicant. The applicant has agreed to this second meeting at the request of the surrounding neighborhood. The director scheduled this public meeting to allow the applicant to present the PUD proposal, the changes therein, to all interested parties. This includes, but is not limited to, neighborhood residents, property owners, associations, neighboring business owners, city officials, and community groups. The goal for this meeting is for interested parties to make comments to the applicant. The Planning Commission meeting for this item is currently scheduled for June 20th, 2023. Can I confirm that with staff? Yes, that is uh, currently the, the goal is to have that on the June 20th, 2023 meeting. A few notes tonight. The City of Conway Code requires covenants for maintenance of common space such as detention ponds. There is not a provision in the code to require restrictions to occupancy types such as renters versus owners, and this will not be a part of tonight's discussion. Covenants are contracts between property owners within the same property owners association, and the city of Conway does not add requirements to covenants beyond maintenance. Discussions regarding renters versus owners and discussions regarding restrictive covenants will not be a part of tonight's meeting. This is a rezone request, not a subdivision development submission. The applicant will still be required to go through the subdivision review process with uh, which the applicant will be required to meet the city code for drainage improvements by the by providing a design and drainage port report which will be reviewed by the city engineer's office prior to any approvals. The subdivision review will also include any other requirements by the city of Conway's subdivision code and any other applicable code. While the submission may represent an improvement at this location to a previous submission and in some, in some individuals' opinions, uh, staff has not given a recommendation of support for the project at this time. Please only speak into the microphone when it is your turn to speak. Your opinion is important to staff and to the administration, and we want to ensure that it is captured for anyone else that watches the recording. For tonight's decorum and procedure, the director will introduce the applicants to the podium to present the item. Each interested party will be invited to the podium one at a time and may give comments only to the director or to the applicant. Only the interested party at the podium will be permitted to speak for a period of three minutes. Conversation between interested parties and the applicant are permitted from the podium. Please do not shout out or speak from your seats. Order of the meeting will be maintained by the Director of Planning and Development. This is not a mandatory meeting and the applicant has agreed to be present to take questions, comments, and concerns into consideration. Note, elected, offic elected and official, uh, appointed officials may comment in this meeting as a member of the public. However, state law requires proper public notices and recording of two or more elected or appointed officials from the same body are pre present to conduct business. Elected and appointed officials are here for informational purposes only. All comments should be made to the director or to the applicant and not directed to any member of the audience. Elected and appointed members are encouraged to not solicit opinions from other elected or appointed officials present or discussing how the member may vote in future meetings. So tonight we've already, a lot of the individuals that have been here uh, have seen the first round uh, submission. Um, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and give the floor over to the applicant to discuss the changes. Can y'all hear me okay? A lot less people here tonight. Um, Okay, so we've made changes to the plat. Have you all seen the changes? Is there anybody here who hasn't seen the changes? Got it pulled up here. 
So originally we're planning on a townhome development with 133 units that has been reduced uh, to 62, 63 single family detached units um, that has only one curb cut rather than two. Uh, the northwest corner is still dedicated to a, a detention pond. Uh, there is an out parcel that is on the west side there uh, that's about a sixth of an acre um, that we've left out and it doesn't plan to be subdivided it's going to be one lot um, and uh, we have included a at the north central part there you see that little walkway that is a walkway that will go to the elementary school to the north for students and cyclists and anybody to keep things safe for the students uh, still in the curb cut there will will include uh, markings for pedestrians and if the city wants to light it up with uh, signage uh, we have no objection to that um, we have also uh, identified all of your other uh, concerns and tried to address those the developer john pennington uh, put out a letter to the neighbors and tried to address each and every one of those concerns from the previous meeting um, including wetlands and all these other issues i don't know how many of you have all have looked at that uh, i hope that you've seen it so you can kind of see what his position is on those issues. He's not here tonight, but if you have questions about those, I can answer them. Um, and so, but the, the biggest change here is, of course, it's single family detached now and significantly less units. And so, what questions do you all have for me? Any questions? Okay. Yes, sir. That's a stub out. If, uh, I'm sorry. If you if you ask a question, can you please speak into the microphone? Here you go. Uh, my question was, where does the road to the northeast go out? Going to the north. That's a good question. So the city fire code, I believe, requires two entrances. They have to be a certain distance from one another. And the way this property lays out, there's not enough space for that for fire code to be, um, I guess, complied with by putting two entrances on the west side along Paget. And so what has been a common thing in neighborhoods across Conway is to put a stub out uh, for the potential for a second uh, uh, point of ingress and egress. Uh, the developers don't own the parcel that's to the north of that, uh, but that has been discussed between, uh, I, I don't know who it's been within the city, but that's been discussed between the developer and the city, and they're comfortable with putting a stub out there that will satisfy the city's fire code. But that doesn't go out anywhere. That is undeveloped land. And so so there's it doesn't really do anything. Does that answer your question? You want to follow up on it? Okay. All right. Sorry. So that's the best I can answer that for you. But that has been done elsewhere. So um happened on at Marvin Gardens downtown by the sort of by the hospital off of college. Yeah, here, I'll bring you the yeah, here's one. If you want to pass it around, that'd be great. Turn it on there. Kind of on the same theme. Uh, on the same theme of that, what yes, is sir. that land zone that that R one goes to? R one, not yes, sir. PUD, not PUD. Okay. Yep. I, I believe it's R one. Uh, Chris, is that I right? I believe that's correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's R one. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. PUD. Uh, the, the way we've currently got it laid out, it, it's almost consistent with R1, largely consistent with it. The density is actually less than the maximum density for R1. Uh, it also allows for these restrictions to be placed in there to protect the neighbors. Um, and, and so that's, you know, kind of a benefits the neighbors in a, in a way. But if you've got further questions about that, we can talk. Any other questions? Yes, sir. This is approved. Uh, yes, sir. Since there is another developer that owns a property behind the school all the way down to Tyler, that would make it easier in the future just saying out, just throwing this out there to develop that all the way down with the same type. That's already zoned, my right. friend. And so right. I, I can't speak for that developer. He's not here and we're not representing him in this. Right. That's completely unrelated. But that's already been zoned. And so he can develop that as pursuant to that zoning right now. Okay. Gotcha. And, and so that's that's nothing that I can control um but uh, i don't know when that zoning passed but uh that's already been done because this was originally a1 and so it has been rezoned to that at some point in time 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this uh, this whole area out into the left up there, yes, that, sir. Is that for contention or? Water yeah, like yeah. This? So, so like I was kind of getting at uh, the the furthest northwest part up there, the top left is. That is the detention pond that's required by the city. And so th there's no way around it. We've got to do that. And however, we've made it larger, large enough that it can address the hydrology concerns that were brought up at the last meeting. A lot of folks had concerns about drainage and hydrology. Well, we've made it large enough that, that engineering and everybody can work with that so that we don't have drainage issues. And also that can, that can help mitigate or preserve wh whatever the feds will require with any wetlands that are identified that can help with that. So, but that drainage, uh, that will be in that top left portion, which if you look at like a, like an aerial map there, I mean, there's standing water in that area as it stands now. And so, um, but as far as the details as to how big or how deep or any of that, I can't give you that because that's between engineering and the developer and any other appropriate parties. And so, but, so I can't really answer that question for you, but that is what that's for. And then right underneath it, you got that other parcel. That's the out parcel. That That is, somebody could buy that and build them a big house there. Somebody could buy it and keep nothing on that, whatever they want to do. But that's about, a, uh, I think it's 0.58 acres, something like that. And so that's just, that's not a plan to put anything there, but it will be under the same restrictions as this property. So, yes, sir. Built around the pond so that there's not a safety issue with the elementary kids right there that it borders the mm. school. I think that, that that's definitely a possibility. I don't know how the city usually handles that. Chris, do, do they require? I think that, that would probably be a part of our drainage criteria manual. Whether or not it's required, I can't speak to as as this as far as this development. If it would be required, that would be a part of their engineering review. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think that's. Kind of safety that yeah, that yeah. really needs to be looked at. Uh, of course, and and I think that that is something that could probably be addressed. I think that's a good idea, um, but yeah, that that would be a part of that developmental review, and uh, you know, but that's something we can talk about more about fencing there. I think that there's going to be fencing along that. Uh, I'd have to check again, but I I don't remember. There's fencing along the south border there with the Hodges. There might be. I know that we're trying to accommodate them and give uh, some screenage there for them. And so uh, screening with, with whatever, I forget how John put it in there, but uh, we wanted to try to help give a buffer there between that, that parcel to the south for the Hodges. But uh, yeah, and there will be sidewalks, a ribbon of sidewalks through the whole thing too. So, uh, but good question. Need to protect everybody from the pond. So any other questions? Good evening, Mr. McKenna. How are you? Good evening. I'm fine. All right. Uh, thank you for being here. And yeah. first, let me acknowledge the fact that this is certainly a better plan than we saw the first time. Yes, sir. I think some of the same concerns <clears throat> remain for a lot of us. Okay. Uh, there's a certain kind of historic nature to where we are oh. now, and most of the buildings around us have been placed on significantly larger lots right and right. i know conway's moving west and it's it may be naive of us to expect that everyone's going to have a five acre lot but uh spencer mountain yeah. that that's a fairly recent development but mm -hmm. those those houses uh are on lots of a good size right uh there's a certain character to the buildings that have been put up mm -hmm. there and i think we've all accommodated to that yeah. pretty well. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much what I wanted to bring up. Is Does it seem reasonable that we could expect larger lots? Because I believe these lots are yeah. smaller than any lots anywhere near us. Yeah, so that's a good question. And uh, I don't think you're going to have lots as big as Spencer, Spencer Mount, okay? And Spencer Mountain is is zoned R1, okay, and so they're they're not required to have that big of lots there either. Um, but uh, I would point your attention to the neighborhood to the east, and that is those are small houses and small lots. Now, um, are you talking? There's two subdivisions behind us. Mm -hmm. There's Canterbury, which is quite close 
right. to this one. And there's also Brownstone, yeah. which is to its south. I, I are you talking about the Canterbury? I don't remember which one, what the name of it is. The one that's abutting the eastern portion of this property. Chestnut Meadows. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and so... Uh, so there are houses that are in lots that are of, are of a smaller nature. Right. Um, but I would say uh, in the letter that the developer wrote to the neighbors and that was put on the city's website, we've proposed uh, building restrictions as to the materials and all that, and they would be nicer looking homes. Uh, I know last time he encouraged everybody to drive through Marvin Gardens, and you know that was a, a development that he did, and they're nice looking homes. Uh, design. Okay, well, thank you for bringing that up. But yeah, it's it's built for a different type of development, right? It's, it's different than Spencer Mountain. Just like the neighborhood to the east is different, and just like Mr. McKenna and everybody else live on a big parcel with one home, right? And so all of it's different. But I do understand that uh, your point that that area of town is a nice area of town with big lots. Not everywhere over there has large lots, and uh, I do understand that these lots are smaller, but I don't, I, I can't say you're going to have large lots like that with this development. The developer made a lot of concessions to get it to this. Um, we went from 133 to 62 or 63, and so we came down like a lot. And, and so I, I don't know how much more he's willing to move on that, but I do appreciate you asking, and they are smaller lots. And we're trying to preserve the character the best that we can. And that's why on the west part there, there is an out parcel. Uh, and we are going to comply with all city and state and federal regulations on wetlands and everything else to make sure that, uh, that everything is, all the boxes are checked. So good question, Mr. McKenna. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the adjoining neighborhood to the East okay, yeah. is uh, Canterbury, okay. and and the, they're on small lots too. But the the character of the houses mm -hmm. appears to me to be significantly different from what I see here. There, uh, that's right. They're, they 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 Canterbury. They're just not one after the other after right. the other. That appear to be almost all the same. Right. Uh, the lots are small, but the houses seem to be built well and of different kind of character. Right. Again, like John said last time, drive through Marvin Gardens. I think that you'll be surprised as to how those compare to the ones to the east of you. I do know, like these folks are saying, they are small houses with small yards. So okay. I think these yards will be a little bit bigger than Marvin. Okay, so yeah. I did drive through Marvin Gardens, mm -hmm. and actually I drove through based on the list that you were you gave us, and thank yeah, you for that. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. Um, the developer did that, not well, me. Okay. So. <laughs> but, but thank you. Yeah. Um, there were some that were nice looking, mm -hmm. and Marvin Gardens w was, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you've seen the, uh, the flyer that we as a group. The initial one? No, we have a new one. I haven't seen the new one, guys. Okay, but not, no. I have it printed out. Yeah, I can I, leave I like, it with I like you. I to take it, yeah. Um, but those lots are so Thank tiny. You. And we even put you. a truck there, and, and we printed off some pictures. Okay. Uh, an extended cab truck was barely able to fit into the driveway. It, 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 the end kind of stuck out. Right. And, and although, yes, those are Marvin Gardens is nicer right. than some of the others, it still is uh, like he said, it, it is not the same character. Yeah, small homes, small yards. Yeah, there is a place for those, but not in West Conway. Like, that is not where that type of development yeah. deserves to be. That it, I'm for that type, but right, like he said, we have nice homes, and those just... Uh, I appreciate your concern there. I really do. I will say, when it comes, when it comes to the driveways, that is something that... I think it's controlled by the city. There's minimum driveway lengths and all that, and so that'll have to be complied with with the city requirements. But as far as the houses and house size, I understand your concern, but that's the nature. Backyards? Well, I understand. Uh, on one of those, on one of those, it looks like the backyard is only 10, 10 feet yeah. deep or whatever. I believe these lots are actually going to be slightly bigger than Marvin, but 
for the purposes of a PUD and the house. That's why John was encouraging to go drive through them because they are nicely built homes. So. Yeah. But still, just like the density of, of this, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if if they were bigger homes or, or larger lots, mm -hmm. it would it would fit in better and uh, and it would and it would not it would it would not be a detriment to the to the area. Okay. I appreciate y'all's thoughts on that. Yeah, and there's there's gonna be what sixty three homes there times two cars, so that's hundred and twenty six cars. A lot of people don't use their garage. I'm not even sure if these are gonna have a garage or they're not. Two, yeah, they're two car garages. Yeah. I think we put that in the in so the So it'll be smaller two car garages that you can't fit an F one fifty in probably. So you're gonna have a lot of vehicles on the road, in the driveway, not because people use their garage mm -hmm. for other things than parking I think cars, especially with limited problem. square footage on the homes. I think city code might 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 control parking on the roadways and stuff. I'm not sure that'd be a question for Chris. If the city does it not, no. If better. the city controls it, they've fallen off the wagon on okay. these because we, Bliss and I, drove around and looked at probably half of the ones that he submitted just to see what they look like. Yeah, I agree that Marvin Gardens is one of the more attractive. That's one that he did. The others he did not do. They are cookie cutter. The driveway's tiny. The pond for the runoff is ridiculous. It's horrible. And there's a picture okay. in there of it. There is no fencing around in, it. In this thing, it's very unattractive. And not only in Marvin Gardens, we took pictures of other ones. Um, so what he's proposing is not completely accurate. Not accurate. What I mean, he's mean? not... I mean, I think it's accurate as to what he's proposing, but I think you're saying that it's just it doesn't fit the area. Right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Not I, at all. I, I understand. Uh, as far as the pond, again, that's a developmental review thing. Uh, you know, if, if you guys are asking for a fence around it, that's something the developer can consider. Brandon, you got a question? No, I was just going to add to that. The There's a major differentiation between retention and de detention. You're right. Can, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, because so I know you, in the scenario of retention, which we saw at Marvin Wood and Gardens, it's, it's basically there to temporarily hold the water. And so when it me meets its max capacity for a large storm event, then it'll essentially fill up and there's a weir that'll spill out and discharge the water, quote unquote, slowly until right. the water's allowed to dissipate. Uh, being that they're labeling this as a detention pond, it would theoretically always have water in it. And assuming with the capacity that it would need to have and the depth that it would have to be dug to to allow that capacity, I will, more than likely would be lower than the flow level of the lake. So I will it will always have water uh, in it. This is Chris. I'm the director of planning and development. A detention drains completely. A retention holds water. So you have those two backwards. Okay. So makes the case even better we're going to plan on dumping all that water into the lake eventually and it would have to meet our drainage criteria standards for the city of conway sure so there's post development runoff totally aware of that and my argument would be that okay so we've got and he john has illustrated there's there's two points of drainage traversing this property uh, we've got a 48 inch pipe coming out from underneath uh, chestnut meadows to the east and then right. the property or the drainage that comes from the neighbors to the south as that water comes across that property as it currently sits, it gets scrubbed by the grasses and the shrubs and the plants that it, it as it traverses that property. And essentially, it kind of cleans it as it goes across the property till it gathers in that corner where they're proposing the detention and then eventually kind of flows into the lake. So when we redo that, all that water is essentially going to not get scrubbed. It's going to be collected and, and redirected in a faster manner, and it's not allowed to get scrubbed, and then it's going to sit in. And so all the oil from the roads and the chemicals from the lawns and the trash and all that will get picked up from that water. It'll be delivered to that detention pond and sit there and then eventually be discharged. Uh, so it'll be unsightly. It'll be hard to manage and maintain that because it's always going to be wet. Uh, and it's just going to be unsightly for all the neighbors and the pedestrians that walk by it every day. I understand your concern there, and I would say that uh, for any development, for any residential type uh, development in that area, I believe there would have to be this pond, and that's going to have to meet the city's criteria. 
do understand your concern on trash and things like that. Uh, I don't know how much trash is being collected on that property right now because I haven't walked it. Uh, but I understand about chemicals and all that. And true, there is not going to be all the grasses that are going to be there anymore. Yes, sir. Right now, I live on Spectrum Mountain. Okay. Got about 120 foot frontage on the lake. Mm -hmm. And every two weeks, I'll pick up at least two five gallon buckets of water bottles and tennis balls and footballs or whatever else is in there. Where's that coming from? I don't know. Chestnut? Okay. Well, I don't know where it's coming from, but there's an awful lot yeah, of it out there. I understand. It's not coming from this property right now, but I understand you're concerned that that could increase. But the potential that. of it yes. is there. Yeah. And another thing I want to address, mm -hmm. that nobody has said this, everybody, it's in the back of everybody's mind. You build a bunch of small cookie cutter houses out here. Mm -hmm. The next thing you're going to have is a bunch of rental property. I'll, I'll call point of order. We are not here to discuss ownership, property rights, uh, uh, property rights between property owners and the uh, developer. I'm just saying that's the, exactly I'm what sorry, will sir, happen. I'll call point of order and I'll hold order. Um, we will not be discussing property rights, uh, rental properties, and home ownership is off the table tonight. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, sir. Do you have any other comments? Well, uh, Conway is known as the city of colleges. Yes, sir. Lately, it's been called the city of colleges and roundabouts. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. But if we keep letting these cookie cutter houses be built every, every place that there's, they can put a house on, it's going to be known as the city of colleges, roundabouts, and cookie cutter houses. And I don't want that to happen. Okay. Does anybody else have any any comments? I understand the concerns about the size of the lot, size of the home, size of the yards, and cookie cutter houses. Uh, is there anything else that pertaining to the the other concerns, traffic, or anything that was brought up at the last one? Spencer Light, yeah. Hi. It's beautiful. Can light. we please get our yeah. microphone? Thank you. It's beautiful, Lake, and I understand your concern about. Well, I, I don't. I can't tell you what's happened to it now. Okay. Well, we know what's happened to it, and it's unfortunate that it's happened. We've had um, people come out, environmental protection come out and look at it and meet with us, and we're trying to come up with a plan. But this is only this problem is only going to get worse if we have runoff from yet another right. developed area, and I am very concerned about that we that lake used to be crystal clear it's brown it's yeah. horrible um and i don't want to see yeah. that continue yeah I, I understand and i don't know where where all that's coming from now and i can't say that i saw it beforehand so i'm sorry about that but i do understand your concerns y'all live in a beautiful area a lot of people would like to live over there and so as far as the uh uh you know the runoff that could come from this you know all i can say is like i was telling uh, brandon is you know, it's, it's going to have to comply with the city requirements. And so, um, you know, um, I don't think the developer here, I don't think it'd be good for him and for business if, if, if he's trashing it up there either, it, you know. And so I understand everybody wants to keep their community clean and, and, and keep their environment clean and healthy. And so I believe the developer here would do everything he can to do that. And so, uh, but I, I don't have an answer to how to, how to, how to fix the like. <laughs> So, but I do understand that you do have a lot of residential areas around there. Any other questions? Just, just a quick comment. Yes. Uh, since we're on the topic of, of environment. Yes, sir. We also have a lot of wildlife here. We have deer that go through on a yep. regular basis. Uh, we have red-shouldered hawks. We have uh, a number of species that would probably be endangered by a larger population and by mm -hmm. some of the... Uh, like concerns right. that, that have been so i just wanted to raise that point yes well. sir and, and i appreciate that too where i live you know i like seeing deer up there and all that too uh you know we're talking about 11.6 acres uh surrounded by development except for on the south the hodges property isn't developed but one home on it and i imagine there is wildlife out there um but conway is expanding guys and you know i'm sorry that you know that it could present issues for wildlife undoubtedly it will I think that the uh, the developer here, you know, if there is a development here, yes, it there are going to be homes there. It's not going to be just trees and grasses. I don't know how many deer bed up in there or not. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I do appreciate your concern. I know that that's a big issue. There's no way that we can just, uh, if this development goes through, I don't think there's a way that we can make it a, 
uh, safe haven for deer or or hawks or whatever. But uh, good question and good concern though. Quality quality concern there. All right. So so I live on the other side of where they're talking about. I live over on Grand Teton, which comes in from a different uh, entrance. Is it that on Spencer? It's all yes. It's all okay. Paget. Okay. Uh, oh, is that on the first entrance coming from the south? That's exactly right. Okay. Um, you know, just looking at it off the bat, you got your you got your one exit mm -hmm. and entry point right there, and so you got school traffic that backs up during the yes. morning. So, my 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 question is: is if they, if this goes forward, mm -hmm. uh, would your developer, uh, you know, they entertain? covering the cost of gating both entrances because what's going to happen is traffic's going to back up and somebody's going to cut in at Spencer. They're going to come over on Timbernall. They're going to come out on Grand Teton I got to you. miss all that traffic. I got you. So increased traffic flow through the neighborhood, that's that's going to happen. Chris? I believe that these are proposed to be dedicated as public streets. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, public streets cannot be gated. Public streets can't be gated. Uh, two, uh, we did have two points of ingress and egress on the west there. We remove that and put it down to one because we believe it's safer for pedestrians, it's safer for traffic, uh, and that was in response to the previous meeting. Uh, I do understand it backs up from the school there. Uh, John went and sat out and observed it, and you know it does go down past the entrance here. Uh, that happens with a lot of the schools around town, guys, uh, not just at Woodrow Cummins. And uh, you know, as far as how how is that going to work? Well, I would assume people just wouldn't block the entrance. Uh, I, I don't know, but it's it's only backed up for a short period of time. Any other time you drive down that road, I mean, it's not terribly congested. It is built as a collector road right now, but it's designated as a minor arterial road, which is meant to hold uh, extra traffic. I'd also point out the developer here would be paying impact fees for his development, and that goes directly back into, if I'm not mistaken, Chris, goes back into developing the roads and improving the roads and parks and everything else in town. Is that right? It goes back into the appropriate funds. So I appreciate that that question though. Did I answer your question? Okay. Okay. I don't think I can keep people from coming down your street though. So who else has questions? Mr. Naylor? Hey. I appreciate you being here. Hey, hey, listen, just a question for me. So why can you explain to us why you're doing the PUD and not the R1? Yeah, so that's kind of what we addressed last time. Um R1 would be more difficult for the developer here with a, if you remember last time he discussed that center round, that center circle there, that uh, double frontage lots are disfavored by the city. I think it's written into the code, okay? And so we don't want lots that the roads are going around the backside and the front side of the house. And so that's why you have the front, uh, that's why you just have, uh, you have two homes back to back there in the middle, okay? Uh, if, yeah, if, if there was double frontage lots, right? Then yeah, sure, there would be more space probably, and and you could widen those lots and all that. Um, but also a PUD, uh, you know, I want everybody to know why you might not think this. PUDs are better for neighbors, and uh, Mr. White, he'd probably say that to to his clients. Uh, PUDs uh, actually uh, have more restrictions you can place on them to protect the neighbors and to do the things that we're talking about. All these things that we're trying to do to accommodate that wouldn't necessarily be available in an R1. PUDs are more of a custom zone, so we can do these things, okay? And so a PUD, uh, it gives everybody a little bit more uh, flexibility as to what we can do. And so that's generally why we're doing PUD rather than R1. Good question, though, sir. I appreciate it. This gentleman here had another question. Smaller number of houses instead of the 63 would be willing uh, to do that. I think his question, does he have a plan C? Yeah. So uh, his question, if, if anybody couldn't hear it, was is he dead set on 63 units? As of right now, this is the plan that was submitted. Okay. This was in response to the previous meeting. I don't know how much flexibility there's going to be after this to completely re renovate the, the whole plan. Okay. Uh, that's something that's going to be up to the developer. But as of right now, this is the plan that we'll be presenting to the Planning Commission. I don't want anybody to be surprised that if this is the plan that goes to the Planning Commission. And so uh, it, it is significantly less than the last plan. I understand folks still have concerns, and I understand the concerns about the houses, sir. 
Uh, but uh, I can't speak for the developer. He might watch this and say, hey, you know, I might want to make some changes. But I have a feeling that this is the plan that's going to go towards the Planning Commission. So I know there's plans for the, a privacy fence along the, the row at the bottom. I don't do east, west, and all that crap. Yeah, the bottom there. But on the other side where the elementary school is, is there a plan for a privacy fence? Are we going to allow people to be able to walk out of their house and basically be on the elementary school property? I don't think that's very safe. I, I don't know the answer to that, but uh, I don't know about the safety aspect of it, but I, I imagine that's probably a doable thing. Um, I'd have to talk to the developer, but I imagine that probably be something that he would do anyway. Uh, he does have that walkway through there, and so there is going to be a walking path where kids can walk through, to the, and that was in response to, well, we don't want kids walking up and down Paget. And so, uh, and I get that too. But as far as whether on the top boundary there, there's going to be uh, fencing all the way across, protecting the, the I guess, the school, uh, the school's view into these folks' backyards, I imagine that's probably something he'd want to do anyway. I just don't have the answer to concrete today to say, yeah, he's doing that or no, he's not. But it, it is a good idea, and uh, if you look at his other developments, generally he has done that. So who else has questions? Yes, sir. Since, since that came up about that fence by the school, there's mm -hmm. a pathway that it shows on the, on the plat there going up to yes. the school. And it's shown in a nice, convenient spot. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have any notion of where the school was, I'd put it there too. Right. But there's a dumpster up there. So I don't know where the school. Need, they need I, to look at that I, and make I, sure. I appreciate that. Can you pull that picture back up? Okay, I, I don't know where the school keeps the trash. I guess that is right around there. That's something the developer can look at. He might be able to move that walking path somewhere else. Uh, you know, that, that's an area where there's trucks loading and unloading, dump truck, you know, garbage trucks. Okay, yeah, I got you. I wasn't aware of that either. So thank you for bringing that to my attention, sir. Questions? I, I don't know if you know the answer, but uh, would the developer be the contractor for all these homes? I think that was asked the last time, and uh, he's not going to hold himself to that. Uh, I, I don't think he wants to marry himself to the idea of whether he can't sell off some of these lots, and he can sell them to other people to build what they want there. And he could; those people could, uh, could they just have to stay within the boundaries of the zoning uh, restrictions here within that PUD with the materials and all of that and also with city code. Um, but other than that, I, I, I don't think he's marrying himself to that idea that he's going to do all of them. I mean, it's conceivable, yeah, he could. But, but I, don't, I don't know for a fact that's going to happen. And if you get other developers that are buying lots and building, I, I mean, sure, they could all look different. That might answer some of your cookie-cutter questions. So. All right, at this time, I'm going to invite um, any, any other individual from the public. Uh, if you would like to um, make additional comments that were not directed directly to the applicant, or if you had anything for me or for the applicant, you can come forward to the podium. Um, staff, will be, um, uh, staff will be open to public input portion of this meeting. Please approach the podium one at a time. State your name and address, and please uh, keep comments. It says under five minutes. Those should be under three minutes. Uh, for tonight's meeting. Uh, speakers may address questions or statements to the director or to the applicant. And if uh, at the end of this meeting, if anyone that has not signed in, please ensure that you sign in at the back table to ensure that the, the appropriate information is moving forward to the planning commission or to the city council. Um, and if I could just start with your name. Uh, Chris, my name is Jim Stockdale, 5985 Brush Creek Loop, and then Spencer five years, been in Conway 36 years. And uh, my concerns have been addressed, but they're mainly going to be questions to you. Uh, we, hear, we keep having questions about wetlands. I'm sorry, about what? The wetlands. Okay. The wetlands. The, the, uh, so I called uh, John Bridgman of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers mm -hmm. at the Little Rock office. And the only way to 100% certainly determine if this is a wetland area is to ask the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to perform a wetland identification and delineation of the property. Yes, I'm aware of that. Is that something that the city does? We would have to. I, I, can I chime in? Go ahead. Hey, sir, I appreciate you asking that. That was something that you guys brought up that we hadn't really considered after the last meeting. 
and we have done a preliminary wetland review. There's private companies that do that, and there have been wetlands that have been identified, and I've spoke to the city, and uh, we'll have to uh, comply with all city, state, and federal regulations regarding preserving or mitigating wetlands, and that goes through the EPA, Corps of Engineers, and apparently it is a significant process, and it takes several months, and that's why I can't really say anything about how big that area is going to be up in the northwest or about that pond or that creek that runs from south to north because that's going to be heavily controlled by those folks and so that that's a moving target but yes we have done that we appreciate y'all bringing that to our attention so all right uh, secondly chris is the water quality uh related uh, to the storm water runoff uh, as uh, one of as one of the ladies mentioned i fish on the lake a lot with my friends and my 16 grandkids. Uh, we have a great time. My concern, uh, I look at this area almost every day. My concern when you're digging the retention pond or the detention pond, my concern is once you go deeper than the present level of the lake, and it's already been mentioned by Brandon, there will be a backflow into the lake. And now you don't have a, you don't have a pond. You now have it simply extended the lake by connecting the two. Then, if the construction starts, clearing of the trees, clearing of the vegetation, the silt will pour right into that runoff. The, the, the silt will, will pour in from the runoff. We're dealing with a silt problem now in the lake from another development north of the property, which is being addressed by the city. And yes, the lake is getting muddier. Uh, still doesn't hurt the fishing too bad, though. Uh, so, but finally, when there are 63 houses with this stormwater runoff, every piece of loose trash or litter, Brandon mentioned this, lawn chemicals, oil leaks on the streets, this will go into this pond and eventually into the lake. So I called Colby Ungerank, who is with the Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality, who oversees the stormwater construction permits, which he clarifies needed for any construction site of 10 acres or more in which the developer submits a stormwater pollution prevention plan. Does this developer have to secure this permit? But typically in the, in the city, they would have to go through a complete review through the engineering department and would, would, with those requirements, they'll have additional requirements. They'll have erosion control strategies. They'll, they'll have to follow those erosion, erosion control strategies or they'll be subject to enforcement. Um, I can't speak specifically to our stormwater program, but I will say as, as a, a person that's dealt with that for over 10 years, um, we do follow within our guidelines, we follow the state's requirements and okay. that typically involves a stormwater pollution prevention plan of some sort. Okay, and it's already been addressed, but in, in summary, I would, I would desire this 11 acres remain zoned as A1. And eventually, if it is to be developed, I would hope this, the city would invite the Corps of Engineers to conduct a wetland study before making any decisions related to the property. Right, and thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, just before I start, are you representing a larger group? Yes, sir. Okay. But I plan to keep my comments to a very small If you could moment. just state which group that you're representing, that way uh, for the recording, we, uh, we'd kind of have an idea as to which group that you're representing. Yes, sir. Uh, Director Paxton, my name is Tom Wyatt. I'm an attorney with Quattlebaum Grooms. Um, and good to see you, Mr. Sanders. I represent uh, the Schreckenhoffers, the McKennas, the Hodges, and the Marions. Uh, the primary thing uh, that they are requesting at this time from the city, if possible, is to request a traffic study around the elementary school. Reason being is that I understand the developer has conducted a visual study of the traffic controls, but that was only in the afternoon hours. That's not during the pickup and drop off times in the morning. Uh, I noticed that there is a curb cut that's uh, somewhat of a distance away from the elementary school, but there were concerns that were stated here at the meeting regarding the amount of traffic going into the subdivision, as well as the close proximity to the pickup and drop off location for the school. Uh, that's one item that I don't see in the city's materials that is important to my client. I do want to make the record clear. Uh, my clients do believe that's a public safety issue, particularly as to school children in the area. Um, I know there's some time before the planning commission meeting, so to the extent that we can get a traffic study either requested of the developer or otherwise proposed by the city and published before the planning commission meeting, that would be helpful for my clients. Uh, the other issue, too, uh, Director Paxton, is a question specific as to what public processes are available 
for either further objection or commentary regarding the stormwater prevention plan as well as the drainage and hydrology studies. As I understand it, it seems as though uh, once the rezoning request is made and approved at the city council level, at that point it then becomes a city matter to determine whether or not the wetlands are being preserved according to required regulations and rules, as well as whether or not it's following city code. And I, meant, I heard that there was a mention of a subdivision proposal. Is that a time when the city or where the city will present its findings on stormwater prevention, runoff, erosion, so on and so forth, as well as also in a time for a public comment regarding whatever the findings of those studies are? So I'm going to start with the, the general requirement is whenever they go through, and my staff is here to answer additional questions also, but whenever they submit the subdivision, uh, proposal, it'll a portion of that subdivision proposal will be a, a stamped engineer uh, um, set of drainage report and drainage calculations, etc. Uh, that will go to the city engineer's office to verify that it meets our our internal codes and our inter internal requirements. With a subdivision, I believe it does go to the planning commission, but I do not believe that it is a it is not a necessarily a public comment item. However, if you would like to um, express any concerns or if anyone has concerns over our regulations, then they're invited to email us at, uh, at the city's planning office and we can get those forward to the appropriate people for the development. However, once it goes to through the public, uh, public uh, comments phase at the rezone, um, at that point it becomes a by right. They, as long as they follow the, the rezone requirements, they also have to follow the requirements listed within the city of Conway's code. Understood. I guess I mean, the disconnect that I'm wondering is, it sounds as though once the rezoning is approved at city council level, then it becomes a city matter entirely regarding the drainage concerns. Is that right? The drainage concerns would be a part of the submission and it would put, be a part of the approval process through the planning commission. Correct. And as I understand from what Mr. Sanders is saying, that is going to be basically a pledge by the developer to adhere to federal, state, and city requirements regarding those concerns. Is that correct, sir? They'll have, a, they'll have to provide a full drainage report that will get reviewed by, by our PE staff. Our PE staff will verify that it meets the state standards, and we have uh, inspectors that will ensure that it gets installed as approved. Is that before or after the rezoning is completed? That will be after the rezone. This is not a development proposal at this time. It is a rezoning. Understood. Thank you very much, Mr. Paxton. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Okay, did I have anyone else that would like to speak tonight? All right, seeing none, I would like to uh, thank everyone on behalf of the administration for coming out tonight. Um, if there are any other questions that you were unable to think of tonight and would like to send us an, an email, it is planning at conwayarkansas.gov. Uh, you can also call my office and feel free to give me any additional comments. Um, at this time, we are adjourned. Have a good evening. And I would ask anyone that has not signed in to please stop by the, the desks at the back and sign in, please.